Good day dear students, this is a video on renal handling of various substances. I have drawn the aorta and the renal artery. Now I am drawing the renal corpuscle, that is the Bowman's capsule and the glomerular capillaries. And this is the tibular part, tibular part of the nephron. So the renal Bowman's capsule and the tibular part of the nephron. Followed by the glomerular capillaries. We know that the columnar capillaries are derived from the efferent arteriole and they drain into the efferent arteriole. C coming into the columnar capillaries is the efferent, that is the incoming arteriole and that which leaves the columnar capillaries is the efferent or the outgoing arteriole. The efferent arteriole leads into the peritibular capillaries. So the peritibular capillaries is another set of capillaries in the kidney and hence it is a portal circulation. Efferent arteriole. Efferent arteriole. And then there is the these capillaries along the side of the tibule so they are known as peritibular capillaries peritibular capillaries now blood comes from the aorta to the renal artery through its branches to the efferent arteriole and drains through the glomerular capillaries into the Bowman's space, into the Bowman's space, and then into the throughout the tibular part to form the urine, to form urine. Mm. Urine formation, formation of urine. is a sum of three basic processes. The first part is filtration. Filtration across the glomerular capillaries into the Bowman's space. This filtration is relatively protein free and free of cells. So the glomerular filtration, which we'll study later is 125 ml per minute or 180 liters per day. So this the first part is glomerular filtration. Lining the tubule are the epithelial cells. These are the epithelial cells which line the tubule. And across these various transport processes occur. Various transport processes occur. So some substances are reabsorbed. This they go from the tibular lumen across the epithelial cell into the peritibular capillaries. Tibular lumen across the epithelial cell into the peritibular capillaries. This is known as tibular reabsorption. When glomerular filtration is 180 liters per day, tibular reabsorption is 178.5 liters a day. So urine formation is 1.5 liters. And why reabsorption? Why not absorption? Because Absorption occurs in the small intestine. You guessed it right. Absorption occurs in the small intestine. Then some substances go the opposite direction from the peritibular capillaries across the tubular epithelial cell into the tubular lumen. From the peritibular capillaries across the tubular epithelial cell into the tubular lumen. This is known as tubular secretion. This is known as tubular secretion. So urine formation is a sum of glomerular filtration minus tubular reabsorption plus tubular 
secretion. Now look at substances A, a group of substances called A, which are filtered and excreted unchanged in the urine. The word used is freely filtered. The word used is freely filtered. That is filtered as freely as water. Filtered as freely as water. Freely filtered means just as water passes through a net, filtration occurs across the glomerular capillaries. So, filtered as freely as water. They are freely filtered. They are not reabsorbed. They are not reabsorbed. Or secreted, neither reabsorbed across the tubular epithelial cell into the peritubular capillaries, nor secreted from the peritubular capillaries into the tubular lumen. This is waste products like urea and creatinine. This is waste products like urea and creatinine and uric acid. Waste products like urea, creatinine and uric acid. Finally, there are B group of substances which are freely filtered. It is filtered as freely as water, but you can see there is passing from the tubular lumen across the epithelial cell into the peritubular capillaries. So they are reabsorbed. They are reabsorbed. Now this reabsorption may be partially they are partially reabsorbed partially reabsorbed could also mean reabsorbed up to 90 to 95 percent or completely all the substance which is filtered is reabsorbed partial reabsorption occurs for glucose sorry partial reabsorption occur complete reabsorption occurs for glucose and amino acids and partial for electrolytes like sodium and potassium. So this is interchange, uh, complete reabsorption for glucose and amino acids and partial for electrolytes like sodium and potassium. And then some substances are secreted. They're freely filtered and reabsorbed, but in addition, secretion occurs. Secretion from the peritubular capillaries across the tubular epithelial cell into the tubular lumen and this is for hydrogen ions. Ions like hydrogen where reabsorption is not sufficient so secretion occurs, filtration is not sufficient so secretion occurs for potassium ions and for drugs which are secreted from the peritubular capillaries across the tubular epithelial cell into the lumen and excreted. So to sum up, urine formation is a, is a combination of lower filtration minus tubular reabsorption plus tubular secretion. Substances like A are freely filtered, filtered as freely as water and not reabsorbed or secreted. Waste products like urea and creatinine. Some substances are freely filtered and reabsorbed. They may be partially reabsorbed like electrolytes or completely reabsorbed like glucose and amino acids. And some substances are freely filtered reabsorbed blood plus secretion occurs like for hydrogen and potassium ions and for drugs. Thank you for watching my video. I am Dr. Swapnil Parlekar. 
प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब एंड हैव अ गुड डे